Hello, I'm JW. This time we're going to have a look at the phase converter again. Now, the phase converter has been delayed somewhat, mainly because we can't actually get to certain shops to buy various bits of material. In the case of this one, some plywood and a frame to mount the thing on this trolley on the floor, which we'll look at in a moment. But uh, nevertheless, uh, we'll uh, have a look today at the various bits we've got and also the wiring diagram, how the thing was actually put together and uh, some kind of explanation as to how it actually works. Now, there's several ways you can actually construct these things, and what we're going to look at here is how this one was supplied originally, and that's also pretty much how it's going to be put back together. There are other ways of doing it, of course, uh, nothing necessarily wrong with those, but it just happens we're going to be looking at the one that we've got here. Now, here's the motor, it's on the floor there. Now, I've painted this black, as you can see there, and it's just sitting on that trolley. The uh, trolley it's on is actually going to be what it's going to be mounted on in the end, but the base of that is a bit too small, because, of course, we need to put the transformer next to it as well, so we need to get some uh, thick plywood or something to put on the top of that, and then we'll have the motor and the transformer just sitting on that base, and then the cabinet, uh, which we'll look at later, is basically going to go on the top of that, so it's all on the same thing with obviously wheels to move it around easily, whereas previously it literally came in those three separate items with a tangle of wiring between them. So uh, motor there, so just painted up in black, and I've uh, cleaned out the inside as well. It was pretty clean anyhow, but Obviously uh, took it apart and just checked inside there, test out OK, and of course we've seen it working before, so obviously we know there's no particular problem with that. Now the transformer is here, I've taken it out of the case, and so it's just sitting there. It bolts to the case with these four fixings here. A bit rusty, we'll clean those up later. And what it's sitting on at the moment is this piece of fairly thin plywood that just acts as a spacer between the bottom of that and the bottom of the case. I'm just going to replace that with something else. But uh, that's just uh, sitting there, that's the original wiring all still attached. That's just a cover for the motor there, again painted black obviously, the same as the rest of it. And then this disc here was over one of the holes in the case for the transformer, and rather bizarrely it's solid brass, which is a fairly odd material, it's quite an expensive sort of material as well, but presumably it was some offcut or something that somebody had at the time, but anyway, that's what we've got there. That white tub is unrelated, that's just an um, easy fill 20. And then the case itself is here. As you can see, it's been painted in a red colour, mainly because that's the colour that we had in stock. So that's the two strips which go along the sides to uh, connect the parts together. So, of course, two of them. And then the case itself there, just painted up in red. And uh, the inside is also red, that's just the primer rather than the actual colour itself. I'm not going to do a finished coat on the inside because obviously it's just inside so no one's going to see it anyway. I'm not entirely sure what this case is. It's definitely not a case for a transformer. It looks like this was some kind of drawer or something originally because uh, it's got these sort of bits on the side here where some sort of runners might have gone and a little tab there for a lock or something and possibly some sort of handle or something fitted on the front. But anyway, that's what we've got. It's definitely been assembled from something else that had its uh, previous purpose before. There's a few holes in the case here. These big ones are for the transform mounting, but it's also got these four smaller holes which are not used. And there's also a set of those on the other piece as well. So definitely been repurposed, but nevertheless we're going to uh, use it anyhow. So it just sits together in the two halves like that. Two straps uh, either side hold it together, and then uh, that's pretty much it. And the other giveaway that this has been homemade is that these two strips, the holes are not in the same place. So you can see here they're not a machine made item because they've just been drilled approximately the same, but obviously not quite the same. So uh, that's the uh, transformer case, it's already go back together. And in terms of that plywood, I'm going to replace it with this material here, which is Fomex, it's a plastic material with like a foamed core. It's fairly hard, but it's about the same thing as that plywood, so we'll just use that instead. Again, we have that around. And so the red paint was only because I happen to have some red paint anyhow. Again, going out and buying stuff uh, isn't really very practical at the moment. Now the cabinet for the capacitors and various other components is actually that thing under there, that blue with the two holes in the end. Now this actually came with the phase converter, but it wasn't actually connected to it or related to it in any way. It just happened to be the person who was getting rid of that as well. Now it's blue, as you can see there. We're going to be keeping it that colour because it's already painted and finished fairly decently. I'm not going to take it out of there today, but here's a picture I took uh, a couple of weeks ago when it was being put together. And essentially we're going to put in here the capacitors and the various terminals and connectors 
And there's also going to be a contactor in there, a circuit breaker, and there's other components we'll look at in the other time. So uh, that's basically going to be the third item. And then I say the whole lot is going to mount onto this uh, wooden platform thing here, which has already got wheels on it. Make that by some piece slightly bigger. Transformer and the motor on the bottom. Piece on the top, and then the cabinet will just sit on the top of that. So it's all in the same self-contained unit. Now let's have a look at this wiring diagram. This is based on how it was wired up originally. There's a couple of modifications which are fairly minor, but uh, we'll cover those as we get to them. Now, first of all, at the top there, we've got the mains power coming in between N and L1, and that was originally going to be intended to be 240 volts for the time period that this thing was made in. We've also done this in the old type black and red wiring, which is pretty much what it had inside it. Now, the transformer there shown is an auto transformer, which means it only has a single winding, so there's no isolation or anything. And it's also a lot cheaper to build than having two separate windings, obviously, because there's a lot less material involved. So 240 volts goes in between L1 and N, and then at the end of the winding, we actually get about 400 volts coming out. And that's uh, the high voltage we need to connect to the two outer points of the motor. Now we can see that L1 actually just goes straight through to the motor, which is at the bottom left there, with the three windings connected in that uh, star or Y formation. And then uh, L3, which is what we're calling it from the other end of the transformer there, again that also goes to the point on the motor winding there, and again that's our output on L3. So that's giving us the higher voltage of around 400 volts between two of the phases, L1 and L3 in this particular case. Now the second items we have here are capacitors, and we saw these in the previous videos as well. There's two sets of these. There's the run capacitors and also a start capacitor. Now the run capacitors I've drawn here as those two. Those are both connected directly between L1 and L2 on the electric motor. Now in the original box there was a lot more than these. I've just drawn two here, but uh, they're all in parallel. So so you just add uh, capacitance as however many you've got. And then the additional set of capacitors were for starting. Now, I've drawn these here just as a single capacitor, but again, as we saw in the previous videos, there was a whole block of those in the middle. And uh, those ones are actually connected via a switch, or in this case, it's actually a contactor. But uh, those are only switched in when it's initially started. Now, the original design had the contactor, which we saw in the middle of that original plan, and it also was powered via a relay. And inexplicably, it was a wrong voltage, so someone had also put a resistor in the series with a coil. What I've drawn here is essentially how it's going to be done eventually. So we've got the coil connected between neutral from the transformer and L2 on the motor. And this is a normally closed contactor, unlike the other one, which was the opposite, which is why they had to use the relay. So initially, it's going to be in the closed state. So those capacitors are connected to the circuit, which is in between L1 and L2 of the motor. And then as the motor spins up and the voltage on L2 increases, we'll then get a decent voltage between there and the neutral at the transformer. That will energise the coil, shown there on the right, and that will open the switch and disconnect those particular capacitors from the circuit, just leaving the other two run capacitors in there connected all the time. Now the output there we can see is basically L1, L2 and L3, and those come directly from the ends of the windings of the electric motor. Now, bearing in mind that L1 and L3 are also connected to the input transformer, which is how we get the 400 odd volts there. L2 is the one that's basically being generated by the motor as it rotates. And again, we've got those capacitors in there to provide the shift of phase so that basically the motor keeps on running, because if without that phase shift, the promoter would obviously stall and wouldn't actually work. Now, this design has a neutral output as well. That comes from the star point of the motor, so it's in the middle where the three phases connect together. There's a point to note that this neutral is not the same as the neutral on the input, although they're both neutrals. The uh, input one, of course, is the correct neutral from the main supply, whereas the neutral on the output is derived from the centre of the motor. And if you look at the transformer connections on the right there where the input is, we can see that the neutral is not in the centre of that winding. Of course, it's offset a certain distance along, as we saw in the previous video, getting about 240 on the input. And there's about 184 volts or so between that neutral and the L3 at the end. So though we've got 400 volts across the two ends, the neutral is not centralised between that, even though we're actually connecting the two windings, which in this case is L1 and L3, between those. So the output neutral is not at the same voltage as the input, 
simply due to the fact that it can't be, as that's obviously shifted along the input on that 400 volt line there. So those two are not connected together in this particular design, and of course they couldn't be connected together, because of course being at a different voltage you would effectively have a current flowing between them, which would result in something overheating and melting. Now of course this also means if you're going to connect some equipment to the output which has a neutral connection as well, then that neutral again is going to be at a different voltage from the normal input neutral, so again some caution is required there if you're going to use it for something with a neutral connection. Now phase converters are not generally used in that way, they are normally used to power three phase equipment, which in a lot of cases like motors only has the three phases there, but if say it was some machine that had a neutral connection for a lamp or something like that, important to note that the neutral connection to that uh, lamp or other single phase bit of equipment is not going to be at the zero volts or equivalent to the earth connection voltage that you would have normally. Now in terms of the component values in the original design the run capacitors which are represented by the two shown to the left of this diagram there was actually eight of those and they were 10 microfarads each so that uh, adds up to 80 microfarads in total they're all connected in parallel they were rated for 370 volts AC which was actually a bit low I thought for the uh, values that we're getting at there but so I think this may have been originally designed for a uh, USA kind of use so voltages would be lower. There were also oil filled things which uh, again we're not going to be using those we're going to be replacing them with more modern equivalents. The start capacitors are say represented here with that single one over to the right. There was actually six of those connected in three pairs and they were DC electrolytics. Originally they would have all been the same value but somebody had actually replaced them but uh, individually they would have already been 220 microfarads each um, because they connected two in a series pair that would reduce that value to around 110 microfarads and then we had three of those in parallel so the total value of capacitance there was around 330 microfarads they also had some small resistors across the terminals of each capacitor. That was purely so that when they disconnected, of course, when that uh, contact opens, any voltage left across those is bled away by that resistor. If that wasn't there, what would happen is that uh, when they charged up and then the contact opened, they would just sit there fully charged, possibly for days, in, if they were decent capacitors. And therefore, if they opened it up to work on the thing, you can actually get a fairly dangerous electric shock from those. The uh, run capacitors don't have those and don't need them either because if you have a look at the diagram now you'll see that at all times the run capacitors are actually connected between the motor windings so when the thing's turned off any excess charge will be uh, dissipated through the motor windings so again you don't need separate resistors for those. Whether we use the exact same values of these in the new design is another matter I mean it seemed to work fairly well with those although there was some imbalance that may have been due to say the capacitors being uh, a bit old or worn out or whatever but we'll start out with the same values if the balance between the phases seem to be uh, a bit off then of course we can uh, add or remove capacitance as required so that's the uh, wiring for that that's also at the end of this particular video say so future ones on this phase converter may be quite a while arriving because say it depends on getting various uh, components and parts sort of plywood or whatever so obviously at the moment not entirely clear when we're going to get that finished, but uh, nevertheless uh, it will be covered in the future. So until then, thanks for watching.